Good afternoon. I'm, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Michael Ignatieff. I'm the rector and president of CU. Uh, I'm a Canadian. Uh, until June 2014, I was teaching at the Harvard Kennedy School. Uh, and since August the 1st, I've had the honor to be rector and president of the university. Um, a little by way of background, I happen to be married to a Hungarian. And uh, so I've spent 20 odd years in this country and have come to have deep affection for its traditions. And above all, for the enormous distinction, the extraordinary distinction of its academic and artistic culture. And CEU has always been a proud part of a truly great international, internationally recognized academic and intellectual tradition. Let me introduce a few distinguished guests here today. Um, we have representatives from the embassies of the United States, Germany, Sweden, Canada, Norway, and Romania. And if I've omitted anybody, I hope you won't cause a diplomatic incident. Um, the Netherlands, thank you. Welcome, the Netherlands. Uh, that, by my count, gives us seven representatives from the international diplomatic community. Um, their presence here today reflects the fact that uh, the issue we're going to talk about, the academic freedom of Central European University, is not just a national or Hungarian issue. It is a matter of international concern. I'm pleased, especially pleased, since CU is registered in the state of New York and offers degrees accredited in the United States that the American Embassy in Budapest has just released within the last hour a statement in which, and I quote, the U.S. government reaffirms that the university is an important success story in the U.S.-Hungarian relationship and it enjoys strong bipartisan support in the United States government. The United States opposes any effort to compromise the operations or independence of the university. And I'm particularly grateful that the uh, Chargé d'Affaires of the United States Embassy is present today, and I thank him for his presence and his unstinting support. Next to him is the Ambassador of Canada. I derive particular personal satisfaction from the presence of the Ambassador from my country, and I thank her for a text that she's released standing by uh, CEU. Let me also welcome a very important figure at CEU, Attila Chikan, an extremely distinguished Hungarian academic and economist who serves on the Board of Trustees. I mention the Board of Trustees because they're the people who appoint me. They are the guarantee of the independence of the university. These trustees include such distinguished figures as the former governor, Republican governor of New York, George Pataki, who's been a long-standing friend of Hungary, Carol Chris, the chancellor-elect of one of the truly <coughs> great universities in the world, the University of California, Berkeley, Jonathan Cole, the former provost of another great American university, Columbia, and the board is chaired by Leon Botstein, president of Bard College in New York. And I speak with the approval of the board of trustees, I'm also accountable to the Senate of this university, and the Senate is composed of the faculty, and I owe an account of my stewardship to my faculty colleagues. I want to make it clear to the national and international press that the legislation tabled by the Hungarian government relating to higher education is targeted and discriminatory, attacks the CU, and is an entirely unacceptable assault on our academic freedom, and not just our academic freedom, the academic freedom of Hungarian higher education in general. Let me explain. CU is a joint Hungarian and American international private university that trains students in 117 countries, or from 117 countries, in master's and doctoral programs in the humanities and social sciences. We are a fully independent academic institution 
accredited by the Middle States Commission in the United States, the New York State Board of Regents, and Hungarian accreditation authorities. Let me make it perfectly clear, this university is and always has been in perfect and full compliance with every regulation of Hungarian law, whether it be tax, whether it be accreditation, whether it be visas, whether it be work permits. We are scrupulous about our obedience and compliance with Hungarian law. And any account to the contrary is defamatory. And we will pursue those who make defamatory comments that affect our reputation with the full force of the legal remedies available to us. Now, the legislation tabled last night by the government, we heard about it a month ago. They didn't have the courtesy to consult us or present us with the, the legislation. It was tabled suddenly last night, is a threat to our continued existence in Hungary. The entire CEU community, our 14,000 alumni, 1,800 students, 200 faculty, will collectively oppose the legislation. It is legislation targeted at us and as such is discriminatory. And if it is passed, CU will resort to all available legal remedies. <coughs> Let me make something else perfectly clear. We will never close this university and we will maintain the continuity of our academic programs no matter what, students currently enrolled will complete their degrees. Prospective students who may be watching this press conference can accept their offers in confidence and show up next September, and we will be there to educate them. We have no other home than Budapest. Budapest has been good to us and we have been good to Budapest. This is our home. We have done nothing wrong. And if you catch anger in my voice, it's anger because it seems to me the government has failed to understand the contribution we make to Hungarian academic life, the role we play in Hungarian intellectual culture, and the credit that we bring to the Hungarian intellectual tradition in general. I'd now like to ask uh, Professor Enya Dijolt, a distinguished political scientist of our faculty, to explain our problems with the proposed legislation in detail. But lest there be any doubt, our position is that the legislation must be withdrawn. Uh, Professor Enya Thank you. I most magyarul fogok beszélni, és szeretnék mindenkit köszönteni. Ez egy nagyon fontos pillanat a számunkra mert eh, megmutathatjuk magunkat, eh, ráirányíthatjuk a eh, figyelmüket arra, hogy milyen eh, támadást vagyunk kitéve, és egyben megmutathatjuk azt is, hogy milyen értékekkel járunk hozzá a magyar felsőoktatáshoz. Első körben szeretném ismertetni azokat a pontokat, amelyeket kifogásolunk a törvénymódosításban. Az első pont kimondja, hogy ezen túl Magyarországon külföldi egyetem, csak akkor működhet, ha van mögötte egy kormányközi szerződés. Hát eddig az, hogy ki mit taníthat, egy szakmai szempontokat figyelembe vevő folyamat döntötte el. Ezen túl egy politikai döntésnek kell mögötte állni. Mindazok az egyetemek, külföldi egyetemek, amelyek nem képesek jövő év februárjáig egy ilyen egyezményt felmutatni, vagyis amelyek esetében a magyar kormány nem hajlandó egy ilyen egyezményt aláírni, elvesztik működési engedélyüket. Azt gondoljuk, hogy ez rossz nekünk, a mi egyetemünknek, de ez rossz a magyar felsőoktatásnak is, mert politikai szempontokat helyez a szakmai szempontok fölé. A második uh, pro, uh, probléma számunkra a törvénytervezettel az, hogy megköveteli azt, hogy a külföldi egyetemnek oktatási tevékenysége legyen a származási országában. 
A mi egyetemünknek nincs. Úgy lett kialakítva az egyetemünk, hogy a helyi, közép-európai sajátosságokat vette figyelembe. Számos olyan amerikai egyetem működik, amelyeknek nincs kampuszuk az Egyesült Államok területén. Ez egy bevet forma. Természetesen elvileg indíthatna a Central European University programokat más országokban is, így például az Egyesült Államokban is. De kérdezem én, miért lenne attól jobb a magyar felsoktatás, hogyha nekünk New Yorkban is működne programunk. A további pontokhoz tudni kell azt a sajátos jogi konstrukciót, amiben a CEU működik. 2004-ben egy törvény született, amely bevezette tulajdonképpen a CEU-t Magyarországon. Azt mondja ez a törvény, hogy ahhoz, hogy a CEU megjelenhessen a magyar felsőoktatásban, szükség van arra, hogy létrehozzák a közép-európai egyetemet, mint egy külön jogi entitás. De ez ugyanannak az intézménynek a, a magyar jogi része, mint aminek a CEU az amerikai része. Tehát a kettő ugyanaz szimbiózisban működik. A kettő közötti kapcsolatot az úgynevezett licenci rendszer szabályozta. Ennek keretében a Közép-Európai Egyetem, mint Magyar Magánegyetem, a CEU programit bonyolította le. A jövőben erre nem lesz lehetőség, ugyanis a törvény kimondja, hogy ilyen szerződés csak az európai gazdasági térség országaiban lévő egyetemekkel lehet kötni. Eddig lehetett az OECD országaival is, ezt kivették, és ez nyilván minket e, e, egyértelműen nagyon súlyosan érint. A negyedik pont ahhoz kapcsolódik, hogy ahogy említettem, jogilag két külön egység e, e, testesíti meg az egyetemünket. Az új módosítás kimondja, hogy két Magyarországon regisztrált egyetemnek nem lehet hasonló a neve. Nyilván a Central European University és a Közép-Európai Egyetem neve hasonló, hiszen ugyanannak az intézménynek a két megjelenési formája. Vagyis az következik, hogyha jól olvassuk a törvényt, hogy az egyiknek meg kell változtatni a nevét. Végül pedig van egy olyan paragrafus, amelyik visszavon egy eddig létező kedvezményt, eddig lehetőség volt arra, hogy az oktató, azon oktatók, akik nem EU-s országból jönnek, úgy dolgozhassanak professzorokként az egyetemünkön, hogy ne kelljen külön munkavállalási engedélyt kérniük, ezt most visszavontam. Tehát mind az öt pont súlyosan érinti az egyetemet, és mind az öt pont a magyar felsőoktatás izolációját fogja elősegíteni. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Eva Fodor, our rector for social sciences, to share with you some of the things that CEU will be, be doing to mobilize domestic support, since we have many Hungarian friends and we have many allies and um, uh, co-workers in Hungarian higher education, uh, and also what we will be doing to uh, mobilize international academic support in the first instance and uh, other forms of support. Eva. Én is magyarul fogok beszélni, ha megengedik, és nagyon rövid leszek. Talán már látták a, a már elkezdődött kampányt, ami a social médiákban elindult a CEU védelmére. Mi az, az elmúlt órában megkértük a diákjainkat, a tanárainkat és a CEU közösségének a tagjait, hogy leveleket írjanak, próbáljanak keresni olyan kapcsolatokat külföldön és Magyarországon is. Nagyon fontos számunkra a magyar kapcsolatok Magyarországon is akik támogatják azt, hogy a CEU jelen maradhasson Magyarországon, jelen maradhasson Budapesten. Leveleket fognak írni egyének is, és remélhetőleg intézmények is, akik kifejezik a támogatásukat. És ezeket a leveleket szeretnénk megosztani politikusokkal, illetve a, a közösségünk tagjaival. Thank you. Um, let me conclude, and then I'll, we'll, all three of us will be happy to take questions. Um, CU has been a proud part of Hungarian academic life for 25 years. We are the university, let's remember, that achieves the best results in international academic rankings in our disciplines. We're the university that receives more European Research Council grants than any other university in Hungary, 
but also in the region. We're the university that has partnered consistently with our brother and sister institutions in Hungary, ELTEC, Corvinus, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, the, the world-famous Ren Renyi Institute of Mathematics. We're part and parcel of Hungarian academic life, and that's why an attack on us is an attack on all academic institutions in this country. And we call on our academic partners here and overseas to speak out on our behalf, because academic freedom is indivisible. We've been your partners, and now it's time for you to come to our assistance. Let me repeat, our home is in Budapest. We do not operate programs elsewhere. We do not operate programs in the United States. We operate programs exclusively in Hungary. We plan to remain here. This law, let me be clear, uh, return to the international dimension, is already damaging American and Hungarian relations. It's damaging Hungary's relations with its European partners, and it's damaging academic freedom in Hungary and Europe. It simply must be withdrawn. We are willing, finally, to work with the Hungarian government. We are ready for dialogue at any time. But now that trust has been broken by the tabling of this law, a simple return to the status ante quo, our existing legal status, will not be sufficient, since apparently the government feels able to revoke it at will. The only way forward is to take the legislation off the table, sit down together, and negotiate an internationally binding agreement that gives us some reliable guarantee that we can operate in freedom in Hungary in perpetuity. We're willing to work with the government at any time to achieve that goal. But a purely domestic remedy is no longer sufficient because trust has been broken and we need to have the international guarantees we require in order to continue as an academic institution in Hungary. I thank you for your attention and we'd be happy to take questions in Hungarian and English, and as you know, a question is a short interrogative statement followed by a question mark. <coughs> One per customer. Sir. Uh, my name is Balázs Védi from RTL Hungary, and my question is, uh, we heard that there's going to be some kind of a demonstration on Friday. Can you tell us more details about that? Is it in the works, or can you confirm that it's going to happen? Thank you. Um, I just concluded with uh, a call to dialogue with the government. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got a lot of free souls in that university. They feel strongly about this. Uh, I have urged them to be prudent, and I've urged them, in fact, uh, to wait until we reach the end of the road with the Hungarian government. I have no desire for demonstrations, to be frank. I'd like to work this out in dialogue, a frank dialogue, once the legislation's taken off the table, because I'm not here to talk about the legislation. I can't talk about the legislation. Sir? Uh, Nick Thorpe from the BBC. Um, you mentioned that you got wind of this legislation a month ago. Um, have you had any contacts with the government in that period that you could speak about? And Mr. Palkovich, the State Secretary for Education, told us earlier this morning that you will have a meeting with him this evening. Is that the case? It is the case I'll have a meeting with Minister Palkovich. Um, we've been trying to get a meeting with the minister for three or four weeks. And uh, hey, presto, we got a meeting tonight. I'm delighted. Um, that's one reason why I'd like to proceed prudently. Um, to repeat, uh, so there are no surprises, I can't negotiate away the academic freedom of this institution. We've come too far and done too much to even consider working within the framework of this legislation. But if the minister is prepared to take that off the table and we can enter into a good faith discussion, um, we, I repeat, we want to stay in Budapest. We haven't done anything wrong. So the ball's in his court, not in mine. Sir? Zoltan Shimon from uh, <coughs> Bloomberg. Um, you mentioned that Budapest is the home of the EU. There's no other home. And yet, at, at the end, you mentioned that uh, <coughs> You have to come to a, an, an agreement that this has to be withdrawn in order for CU to continue here. 
Does that mean that if it's not withdrawn and an international agreement is not struck, that CEU would consider moving somewhere? We've made it very clear that there's only a plan A. We've made it very clear that if you've been happy in a house, if the house is yours, if you've had good relations with your neighbors, give me a reason why you should move. We see no reason to move. But I've also guaranteed my faculty and staff that we will never interrupt the academic continuity of our programs for a second. This university is not going to close under any circumstances, and we won't be pushed around. And that's all I'll say for the moment. Sir. Uh, thank you, Andrew Brown from the Financial Times. Um, would you rule, just two short ones, would you rule out um, holding, if you're, if you're forced to it next year, temporary classes or instruction outside of Budapest? And secondly, you said that the uh, amendments would require an international agreement with a political backing. Is it your understanding that that would require approval uh, at the White House level? Would the international agreement you're seeking also require that level of political approval? Um. Uh, I am so determined to, and the trustees, everybody in this institution is so determined to continue teaching and doing research that we'll do it in any circumstance. That's my answer to the first part. As to the international agreement, um, that's a complicated legal question. The federal government of the United States does not have jurisdiction in this matter. That's why Universities are accredited at the state level, just as in Germany they're accredited, accredited at the lander level. So the international agreement that we're talking about would be a binding international agreement between the state of New York and uh, the government of Hungary. But it's also would be helpful to have a little help from Washington. And as you heard from an earlier statement today, the United States government takes, I don't want to put words in their mouth, but the United States government takes a dim view of this table the legislation and we would count on their continued support as we engage in those discussions. But I want to put a stress on the international agreement. Um, you know, if you worked in a place for 25 years and suddenly, without any warning, a government changes the rules under which you operate, you need some pretty solid guarantees before you continue operating in this country. But that's exactly what we want to do. We're, we, there is no question about our determination to remain in Budapest. Sir? Hello, my name is Martin and I'm from Reuters. I get the impression from uh, your statements in the governments that it's the case of the unstoppable force and the immovable object. Um, Mr. Orban very rarely backs down. And from the way you talk, uh, you obviously don't intend to back down either. Um, what kind of, uh, what level of tension do you think we can expect from this? Uh, uh, honestly, looking at the statements made in the last 24 hours, uh, this could get pretty tough. What's your assessment of the situation? Um, I'm anxious to sit down face to face with a government minister and with anybody that they designate, put the table legislation aside, and say, my interest is to create a stable framework in which a great Hungarian-American institution that's been part and parcel of this country for 25 years is assured of its academic freedom in perpetuity. That's my, that's my goal at this side of the table. What's your goal? Tell me what we can do here. And if they are interested in doing that, then we will negotiate in careful and scrupulous good faith and require international guarantees, and we will require that agreement to be binding and um, I have no desire to raise the tension, um, but I have no desire to back down. And, and the presence of these international ambassadors here, and I don't want to embarrass them or draw them in or ask them to, you know, but their presence here is a symbol of what's at stake here. This is not just a Hungarian issue. This is about international academic freedom. Why does international academic freedom matter? It means that universities ought to have the freedom to choose whatever student they choose based on merit. 
that they should be able to hire whatever professor they wish to hire on merit, that those professors should be able to teach and research on any to topic, that students should have the right to express their opinions freely. Academic freedom implies respect for local conditions and situations, but if it doesn't mean freedom to speak, freedom to teach, freedom to hire, freedom to recruit, you can't operate as a free institution. And this is not, in other words, a, 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 you'll be aware that there have been attacks on academic freedom in many jurisdictions, uh, and we fervently hope that Hungary will not join that list of delinquents. <coughs> Uh, I'm trying to be fair here, uh, sir, in the red check. Uh, yes, please, go ahead. And a másik kérdésem pedig, hogy a jól tudom, akkor Falkovics államtitkár úrral leülnek egyeztetni. Mit várnak ezt a tárgyalástól, mire számítanak? Mi a korábbiakban nagyon jó benyomásokat szereztünk az államtitkár úrról, úgyhogy azt gondolom, hogy egy értelmes párbeszédet fogunk vele folytatni. A kérdés az, hogy neki mennyire van megkötve a keze. Tehát, hogyha itt most egy olyan politikai döntés született, amit ő sem tud befolyásolni, akkor Egyszerűen csak udvariaskodás lesz, ha viszont valóban eh, eh, megvan a mandátuma arra, hogy valami értelmes megoldást találjunk, akkor a részünkről teljes mértékben benne vagyunk. De mire gondolok, ki által lehet Hát nyilván, a, hogyha egy eh, miniszterelnöki szintű döntés született volna, nem tudok erről, de hogyha egy ilyen született volna, vagy egy miniszteri szintű döntés, akkor egy államtitkár azt nem változtathatja meg. De nem, nem, nem. A question behind you. Yes, ma'am. Magyar csilla vagyok a nektől, és azt szeretném mondani, hogy ez egy törvény. Ha ez kivégi, lesz egy következő, meg egy következő, tehát föl kell készülni valamiféle harcra, és nem szabad csüggetni, viszont a kérdésem az lenne, hogy a civilek segítségét miért nem veszik igénybe. Itt kint egy flash mobot szerettek volna csinálni, fél kettőkor és senki nem jött ki, aki nyilatkozott volna. Ott volt egy csomó tévé, ott voltak az emberek, és nem találtam egy embert se, aki oda kijön, és elmeséli, hogy mi történt itt kérdettőnk, vagyis hát a megbeszélésen. Higgyék el, hogy szükség van, és vannak segítőkész civil emberek, és szükség van rá. Tehát nem csak a nemzetközi közvéleményt, a magyar közvéleményt is igénybe kellene. Mindenkinek a segítségét nagyon szeretettel várjuk, a civilekét és az egyetemi emberekét és a, a médiáét és mindenkiét. Mi fél kettőkor egy nagy egyetemi gyűlésen ültünk, ahol ott ült az egész SEU körülbelül és hozzájuk beszéltünk. Urat, aki a rektor úr mellett ül, kérdeztem, és ő azt mondta, hogy ő most nem ér rá. És egy diák képviselővel beszéltem, ő pedig azt mondta, hogy nem mer nyilatkozni, mert hogy azt mondta a rektor úr itt a megbeszélésen, hogy diplomatikusan, finoman nem lehet. Nem lehet. Tehát diplomatikusan oké, de finoman nem nagyon lehet már. Én azt gondolom, azt gondolom hogy lehet finoman nyilatkozni. Azt mondta, hogy azt is mondta a rektor úr, hogy, mm. hogy a, a demonstrációnak nincs ellenére. Hát ez lett volna most. De hát folytatják. Ja, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Um, az, az hangzott el a, a rektor úr, nem a demonstráció ellen beszélt a diákoknak, hanem azt mondta, hogy várjanak. Várjanak addig, ameddig a, a kormányjal olyan, vagy, a, vagy a, 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 az államtitkárral, illetve a felelő személyekkel tud beszélni, és ki tudja deríteni, mi a helyzet. Tehát nem betiltott, nem arról volt szó, hogy ezt, ezt nem lehet megszervezni. Draft legislation that's on the table now could be seen in a wider context as including also the plans, for example, against the NGOs that receive funding from George Soros. Does the university, in a way, feel caught in the crossfire between the prime minister's ideological battle 
with the founder of the university? Um, I'm not going to comment on the Prime Minister's ideological battles, frankly. Uh, you know, you should go and talk to the Prime Minister about his battles. It's no concern of mine. My concern is simply to defend the academic integrity of an institution. We are proud of our association with the man you mentioned. We're proud of our association with the Open Society Foundation, but I want to make it clear to everybody, we apply for funding for our programs uh, on a case-by-case -case basis to the Open Society Foundation, but it does not fund our operations. We're funded by uh, revenue from tuition. We're funded from our endowment. So we're separate institutions. Um, crossfire, I'm not, anx I'm not interested in a crossfire. I'm interested in finding a solution. Uh, sir. What about what about Digit 24 Television Romania? We've heard uh, Secretary of State Polkovich this morning saying that the government insists that there must be a bilateral agreement between the United States and Hungary uh, for backing this EU functioning in Hungary. Uh, do you see it feasible that the CEU or Mr. George Soros will go to Mr. Trump and say, please, please sign this agreement so that the CEU can further function? Well, I, I just like to make one thing clear that I was trying to make clear earlier. I received my appointment from the Board of Trustees. I'm accountable to the Board of Trustees and I'm accountable to the Senate of the University. It's an independent institution. The person who will negotiate any agreement about the future of this university is me. End of story. And will you go to Mr. Trump and ask for such an agreement? As I said in answer to an earlier question, under U.S. constitutional law, the jurisdiction that is relevant in this case is the state authorities, not the federal government. Uh, I'm Dr. Baku from Mangina. Um, the state secretary Falcom said that uh, this legislation is not concerning only the CU and it's not especially uh, drafted for the CU, but also other institutions. He uh, told the examples of Chinese, uh, Thailander, and Malaysian universities. My question is, uh, have you negotiated with these uh, institutions? Uh, do you try to make a common standpoint to negotiate together against the government? Well, you could have fooled me. That is to say, this is legislation that, when you look at it carefully, exempts EU states from its application in order to avoid a conflict with Hungary's European partners, but it explicitly includes OECD countries, of which they're not an infinite number. One of them happens to be the United States, the other happens to be Canada and other institutions. So it's a piece of legislation explicitly targeted to a very, very narrow set of international institutions. And we can, forgiven, we can be forgiven for thinking this is discriminatory legislation targeted, in effect, at one institution. And it's on that basis that we will contest its legality. It's on that basis that we will oppose the legislation if it passes Parliament and seek to raise various questions about it in the forum that are available to us. Because as I understand the notions of natural justice, it's not really a good idea for, for a legislature to pass legislation directed at one institution. And that's the way we feel about it. So the other institutions of these Asian countries uh, didn't object? Uh, you'd have to ask... You, You'd have, to, you'd have to ask them, and we maintain good relations with all kinds of international institutions. We feel part and parcel of all the institutions that offer uh, credible academic uh, offerings in Hungary, and we'll work with them in any way. But when it comes to it, our perception is this is targeted at CEU, it's discriminatory, and we have to defend ourselves. If at a later point it's possible to form an alliance of like-minded institutions who feel similarly targeted, I'd be only too welcome to, to form such an alliance and work in conjunction with them to uh, resist the legislation more effectively. Back row. Well, it happened last night. We've received quite a number of email messages from Hungarian colleagues. 
um, and we will be um, talking to Hungarian rectors. I mean, you have to remember, I get my, my rectorship from the hands of the president of this country. I take that honor very seriously. And so we are, we are a member of the Hungarian Rectors Conference, and we will be talking to them in the days ahead. Um, and uh, I, we, we, we invite their support, and we invite their understanding. And I think they understand what I said earlier, which is that academic freedom is indivisible. And if you ask the question, would, um, would Hungarian academic life be freer if CEU was shut down by the government? I think the answer to that question is pretty obvious to our partners. Could you, could you understand why they wouldn't be so vocal about this? Of course I can. <laughs> Sir? Yes, can you talk about the time element in all of this? I mean, one thing is about who is right and who wins. But as you indicated in your message to prospective students that they should apply and could be here, if plan A falls through and you need to make alternative arrangements, that takes time. If you want to win court battles, that takes time, and you have the next academic year to worry about. Um, one of the aspects of the legislation I like least is the timetable that it envisages. Um, and this is why we regard it as both discriminatory and punitive in the sense that it's asking for compliance. Um, um, my understanding is it might, if, if tabled and passed, notice I said if, um, it would come into effect in, I think, September 2017 in one draft that I've had a look at. Um, we'd have to be in compliance by February 2018. And then, you know, we can't admit students after September 2018. Anybody who knows what a university is like knows that's a punitive timetable. It's a, it's a discriminatory timetable. It's one of the many reasons why we oppose the legislation. But I repeat, um, this is an institution that does not bow to pressure and force. It will not be intimidated. We will make it work whatever happens. Sir. Tervezzük, hogy vele is konzultálunk, konzultálunk az Európai Bizottság többi tagjával is. Én úgy tudom, hogy már foglalkozik az ügyel az Európai Bizottság, és Navracsis Tibor már adott egy nyilatkozatot, hogy ő személy szerint is vizsgálja a kérdést. Well, I think we've, um, we've had the, uh, the questions. I'd like to thank you for coming. I'd like to thank you for your presence. We will be in continuous communication with you as um, this affair develops. Thank you very much.